The Mystical Kabbalah. First published in 1935, this is not only a classic, but a must-read for anyone interested in the Western mysteries and magic. The author, Dion Fortune, was a famous occult writer back in the early 1900s. She was a psychologist, so she was an excellent writer and researcher. In fact, she was a part of the Golden Dawn Mystery School, and then later she founded her own mystery school called the Society of the Inner Light, and that was in London. She founded that in 1924. So let's look inside this book. Let's look at the table of contents and talk a little bit about what's in here. I do love her very practical writing style. She's very to the point about things, which is really nice. This is the table of contents, and what you can see here at the top, we have part one, which is a lot of theory about the Tree of Life. She talks about the Yoga of the West, which is high magic. Uh, she talks about the method of the Kabbalah, the unwritten Kabbalah. The Kabbalah is the Tree of Life. Okay, it's based on the Tree of Life system. And she talks about the three supernals at the top. The, these are, this is the Holy Trinity. Uh, she talks about patterns on the Tree of Life, uh, the 10 spheres on the Tree of Life, which are your powers, your consciousness. And she talks about the four worlds and the paths on the tree, um, practical work upon the tree. And then after she goes into all this theory and explains a lot of things really well, she goes down here into each of those 10 spheres. And with each of these spheres, each is a chapter. And I mean, they are like 20, 30 pages long each where she gives you the correspondences. You can see right here, um, this is chapter 20, Tipereth, which is the middle of the tree of life, uh, sphere number six. She talks about um, all of the different uh, correspondences, the archangels, the God names, the spiritual experience you have. And it's about the mysteries of the crucifixion, sacrifice, uh, virtue. She talks about the virtue here and um, your vice. She talks about the tarot cards that are associated with it, astrology. Uh, and she goes into great detail in here about a lot of different points on the tree of life um, for each sphere. So just to give you a quick little example of how she talks about these different symbols on the tree, and I'm going to give you a, a little example here of her writing style. Her writing style is a little outdated. I mean, this was published in 1935, um, and her, her writing level is high level. She was a psychologist. So um, I'm going to give you a quick blurb here on the Calvary cross. If you don't know what that is, it's going to pop up here for you. You might know it as the crucifixion cross, and it's right here in the middle sphere. Okay, so the Calvary cross, she says, is the cross of sacrifice and should properly be colored black. Its shaft should be three times the length of its two arms and the length of each arm three times its width. Meditation on this cross brings initiation through suffering, sacrifice, and self-abnegation. The crucifix is, of course, an elaboration of the Calvary cross. So she goes into the crosses, the different types of crosses. She talks about the swastika and how it's a nature cross. And sometimes it's called the, the cross of Thor or the hammer of Thor. And its form being supposed to indicate the whirling action of his thunderbolts. And she goes into so much more detail here. I'm just going to stop there, though. This is just one symbol and it goes on and on. Um, but to give you a little bit of her, um, the way she writes and um, how she kind of puts things together for you. So if you like that writing style, if you like knowing about the symbols and understanding the practical nature of the tree of life and, and how to meditate on these symbols and, and what these symbols mean exactly, um, this can help you with dream interpretation. It can help you with any meditation work you do, any alchemical path working that you're doing um, to understand what's going on in your subconscious a little bit better. To give you another example of her writing style and to understand where she's coming from, she says here, the occult practitioner uses a philosophical conception of the tree to interpret what it represents to his conscious mind. And he uses a magical and ceremonial application of it and of its symbolism to link it up with his subconscious mind. Actually, she really means unconscious, but anyways. So I hope that gives you a little bit of an example of her writing style and really how deep this book is. Um, and again, her, her writing style is a little outdated, but it's not as fluffy or poetic as some of the other occult writers from back in that day. They would get really deep and really poetic. Whereas she's a little bit more scientific, practical, and she does a great job explaining 
um, why she thinks the way she does. She'll say, okay, this source said this, this reference said this, and this is how I see it, and this is why I see it that way. In fact, she talks about the symbols in a very practical way. And she talks about, for instance, Malkuth. Malkuth is also associated with the root chakra. And so the root chakra is associated with the manifested physical world that you're living in, your physical body, also the four elements being air, fire, earth, and water, right? So she takes like that and she'll say, okay, so the four petaled lotus is associated with the root chakra or the Malkuth center, the sphere on the tree. And she says that's because the four petaled lotus is represented by the four elements. So all of these occult writers, right, they have their own theories, their own ways of looking at things, and we all do, and you should. And as you develop and as you meditate on these things, you'll come up with your own things, right? And I like what she says here. If you're a fan of Aleister Crowley, here's to give you a little bit of a difference between them two. They have a lot of differences, actually. But Aleister Crowley, um, he was a famous occult author at the same time as her in the early 1900s. And um, his material is based on, you know, Thelema and also the Golden Dawn as well. He was a part of the Golden Dawn just like her. And um, he wrote the book 777, which is an encyclopedia of symbols, um, which is very competitive with this in a lot of ways. Um, but it's more of just an encyclopedia, whereas this is actually her like writing it all out and talking about the practical uses and stuff. But she says about 777, do not assign gods to paths. Okay, so I want to differentiate something. On the Tree of Life, you have the 10 spheres. Those are your powers of consciousness. But then you have the paths that connect all of them. Everybody views them a little bit differently, but I like what she says here. And this is different from Alistair, so I like to put things out there that, you know, uh, offer you a different way to see things. Do not assign gods to paths on Cro as Crowley does in 777. It is the spheres alone that represent natural forces. The paths are state of consciousness. The spheres are objective and the paths themselves are subjective. All right, so I like what she says here because the spheres are, are more objective. They're more about the vices and virtues, the things that you need to learn. Uh, faith and devotion, for instance, is one of them. Another one would be uh, experience and knowledge. Another one would be intellect. Another one would be uh, controlling your feelings and using them in the right way. So they, these, these spheres, they teach you aspects of um, development and spiritual awakening as you climb up the tree of life. But the paths, they connect the spheres. And so those are more subjective. And so you're connecting your intellect to your emotions, for instance. And so how does that work for you? That's a little bit higher level. And I like how she explains things, though. She talks about the spheres should be interpreted macrocosmically with the, the, um, the planets, for instance, and, and more uh, universal and natural law, whereas the paths are microcosmic. And they should find the, um, the clue between man and nature, like looking at both of them and, and working with both of them on the tree of life and meditating on the symbols of both. But they shouldn't really overlap as the same thing, okay? Um, and I'm not going to really go more into the tree of life right here. But just know that she explains this kind of thing in a really good way. So this is a book of philosophy, but also practical, magical work, alchemical work. And she talks about all of the symbols in, in much detail because she wants you to meditate on them before you use them in path working because path working is where you are journeying into an inner realm uh, that it's like dreaming while you're awake. Okay. And when you're doing that kind of work, you're doing like shadow work. You're doing spiritual development in a higher realm. You are enhancing your own abilities and manifesting a better life. You're spiritually awakening. Okay. And she wants you to understand the symbols before you jump in um, because she wants you to be able to use them and understand them and, you know, make use of them psychologically as a psychotherapeutic tool in a way, but also in a spiritual awakening kind of tool. So again, I highly recommend this book, especially if you want to do path working. Um, she really goes into the philosophy, breaks down the symbols, explains them really well, uh, teaches you how to use them, how to use them in magic.
And if you love this book, and maybe you already have read this book, I recommend checking out The Cosmic Doctrine. The Cosmic Doctrine is another one of Dion Fortune's books, and it's on it's on your on the creation of reality. It's more about um, the macrocosm in a lot of ways and the understanding of nature spiritually, which is really fun and really cool. If you are interested in pathworking, it's good to have a guide. In fact, you can join a mystery school to get a guide in pathworking and alchemical magic. There's a lot of them out there. Um, there's the Rosicrucians and the Golden Dawn. I also have my own spiritual awakening, alchemical magic mystery school. Um, if you would like to join us and uh, do this step by step and learn from the beginning, you like my teaching style, um, you would probably enjoy coming into my course. We go, I go live with everybody like every week. Uh, we have a private community chat where we talk. If you ever have questions, let's say it's the middle of the night and you're doing your path working or you're doing a meditation or one of my exercises for enhancements and all of a sudden you have an experience, you can jump on our private chat on Discord and you can actually talk to us. And if you tag me, then I'll get that message immediately and I can actually talk with you through that. So it's a very personal type of experience if you do join my program. Um, if you are looking as a beginner to literally learn from the beginning, you'll love it. And if you're intermediate, you'll love it too because I've been doing this work for like 20 years. So anyways, um, I do suggest checking out Dion Fortune though if you are interested in this kind of work. I think you'll enjoy her books.